But today we're going to take a look at solving absolute value inequalities. We took a look at quadratic inequalities, so the next class we will graph the absolute value inequality like we did the quadratic inequality. Remember, for the equation or equality, the absolute value of x equals 2, you do have the two solutions, and if you put those on the number line, they're just dots. x is only equal to one of two values, that's it, because their distance is two units from the number line, or from zero on the number line. So you're either going to have a less than or a greater than symbol. Do you remember from ninth grade or middle school the terms conjunction and disjunction? Conjunction, junction, there was like a little video and you looked at conjunction versus disjunction. How many of you is that familiar? No? Well, I can show you, if you have heard of it before, I can show you little tricks to help you memorize um, which is going to be the inequality with the word and, which is going to be the inequality with the word or. But bottom line, it doesn't matter. You can just look at how you shade, okay? So when the symbol is less than, notice step one is the same as solving an equation. Isolate. Once you have it isolated, set up two inequalities. So when it's less than, one inequality is going to be A, whatever's in there, the expression, less than your B. The other one's going to be A greater than a negative B. As I said, you don't have to memorize what the connecting word is for those two inequalities, so we'll come back and fill it in based on our graph. So then here, you set up the two inequalities. If it's greater than, so A greater than B, so you keep it the same, and it is the symbol and the value for B. And then in the second one, you switch the symbol, so you reverse it and make this negative. You solve both inequalities just like you did for the equation, and then graph it. So here's two basic. Oh, but the saying to help you remember is keep it the same. switch, negate. And the it is the symbol in the B. So keep it the same for the first one, greater than B, switch the symbol, negate the number. Okay? So this is just real simple. There's no expression in the absolute value symbol. It's just an x. So the two <laughs> inequalities are going to be x less than 2. You keep it the same. And then x Switch the symbol, negate the number, so greater than negative 2. So we're going to go back and fill in this word. Open or close circles, though, at the 2 and negative 2. Open. So open, because it's not equal to 2. And then if I look at this inequality, x less than 2, do we shade left or right? Left. So we shade to the left. X greater than negative 2, that's to the right. Now do you know, is that an and or an or? This is an and. So you can finish your answer, so you have to solve and graph. So the answer, you can just put a word, or the word and between the two. But on an assessment, you'll see it written like this. Negative 2 less than x less than positive 2, because that's where your circles are. Okay, so this is the graph, this is the solution. For the greater than symbol, again, you keep it the same, so keep the symbol the same, the number the same. And then for the second one, you switch the symbol, so less than, and then you negate the b, which is the 2. So close circles this time because it has the equal to line. Greater than is to the right. Less than is to the left. When you're shading this way and you have that gap, it's this or that. So the connecting word for this one is or. So you can finish by putting the word or in between. And that's the only way to do it. There's no two ways to write the solution for or like there is for and. So that would be the final answer. So now if you look at number one, what's different is that there's an expression in the symbol. It's not just x. Okay, so you first start by 
setting up the two inequalities, so 3x plus 6, 3x plus 6. So I keep this the same for the first one, so less than or equal to 12. And for the second one, we reverse the symbol and negate the 12. <coughs> so keep it the same, and then switch, negate. And we just solve them both. So doing those inverse operations in our head, this is going to be 3x less than or equal to 12 minus 6, which is 6. Dividing by 3, x is less than or equal to 2. For the right side, when you subtract 6, negative 12 minus 6 is a negative 18. Divide by the 3, and x is greater than or equal to negative 6. On the number line, We need negative 6 and 2. You don't have to put the 0. The symbols, <coughs> when they have that equal to line, it means they're going to be closed. And for x less than or equal to 2, we shade to the left. Greater than or equal to negative 6 is right. So you can finish this question by putting the word and between your two solu uh, solutions, and you're done. But on an assessment, you're most likely to see it negative 6 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 2. So you know how I asked if you, some of you remember the words conjunction and disjunction? Conjunction, if you take a look at this symbol here, it's almost like the C. Okay, the other way. If you draw a line down connecting the one part of the symbol, see that it looks like a D. But conjunction, when you're connecting two sets, was with the word and. Disjunction is connecting two sets with the word or. So that's how you can use this little trick. If this looks like a C, you know you're going to be shading between. And then I'll show you on the back when it's the D. All right, number two. This is not isolated. So adding a little bit to the difficulty, we have to subtract four first. And the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 6. So now that it's isolated, we can make the 2. So it's x minus 3, x minus 3. And for the symbol, you keep it the same. So less than 6, and then switch <coughs> negate. Really easy equations or inequalities rather to solve. All we have to do is um, add 3 to both sides. So add 3, <coughs> x is less than 9. Add 3, x is greater than a negative 3. So on the number line, I need negative 3 and 9. Open circles because it doesn't have the equal 2 on the symbol. Looking at this, the symbol here, it looks like the C. So I'm going to be shading between. That's the and. So less than 9 is to the left. Greater than negative 3 is to the right. So we're shading between. So you can connect these with the word and, or write it negative 3 less than x less than 9. So there's the solve and graph. In number 3, we have to do two steps to isolate the absolute value. We have to add the 6 over and then divide by negative 2. Do you remember from Algebra 1 what happens when you divide both sides of an inequality by a negative? So let's add the 6. And we end up with negative 2 times the absolute value of x plus 5 less than negative 14. And when we divide by that negative 2, we have the absolute value of x plus 5. Negative over negative is positive. But what happens to your symbol? Does anyone remember? Yeah, when you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative, okay, you're going to have to switch this less than symbol to a greater than. So now this looks like the D. So if you were to draw a line that looks like a D for disjunction, so it's going to be an OR. It's going to have the gap in between. So for one of them, so X plus 5, X plus 5, keep it the same for one, switch, negate. Another easy inequality to solve, we just have to subtract 5 from both sides. So subtract 5, we get X greater than 2. 7 minus 5 is 2. Subtract 5, x is less than a negative 12. Open or close circles? Open. So negative 12, 0, 2. 
open circles. Greater than two is to the right. Less than two or less than a negative 12 is to the left. So this is the or, which makes sense because it's the disjunction. On to number four. If you look at number four, so just as you would, some of you are solving. So let's pause, stop solving, because this is a no solution inequality. Just like with an equation, pay close attention to your b. If this is negative, will the absolute value of any number ever be less than or equal to a negative number? No, because the absolute value is always a positive number, and that will never be equal to a negative. So the answer is no solution. So watch out for that. So we just have to finish with number five. And what's going to make this different from the rest is we're going to see that algebraic expression on the right. So subtract the 3x. Negative absolute value of x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 6 minus 3x. We have to divide both sides by the negative 1. So that's going to switch the symbol before we make our two inequalities. So the absolute value of x plus 2, that's greater than or equal to, switches to less than or equal to. 6 divided by negative 1 is negative 6. Negative over negative is positive. Now we can make our 2. So x plus 2 stays the same. And then we keep it the same, switch negate. So keep the symbol the same, keep the expression the same, and reverse the symbol, and then switch the negative 6 to a positive 6, the positive 3x to negative 3x. Okay, we're still going to do some of these inverse operations in our head. If you solve them, so you always end up with a positive number of x's on one side, so if I subtract the x from both sides to get 2x over here and then add the 6 over to get 8. If you always set it up that way, you won't have to divide by negative number and switch the symbol again, okay? So divide by 2 and x is greater than or equal to 4. This side, add the 3x over and you get 4x. Subtract the 2 and you get 4. Divide by 4, x is greater than or equal to 1. So on the number line, Here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Open or close circles? Close because of the equal to line. So closed at 4 and 1. So x greater than or equal to 4. If you don't like the symbol that way, you can switch it. So the x is on the left. That way you look at the symbol, it tells you to point. So you can always switch them. x greater than 4 is going this way. And then x greater than or equal to 1 is going this way. It goes right over the top of the other one. If that happens, what's the answer? Well, it didn't have, um, there's no two circles anymore, right? It's just the one circle because that one went over that one. So the answer would just be, how does x compare to the 1? So since the 1 circles at the 1, it's greater than or equal to 1. This, in, this here includes that one. Okay. So if it includes it, the only answer is x greater than or equal to 1.